We are beginning our sessions in history of English literature. As mentioned in our previous video, the social, political and religious situations of a country are necessary to understand the literature written in the country. A study on the history of literature in English written by the English begins with the Old English period or the Anglo-Saxon period and that is our topic for today. Hello and welcome to Ace the English Hub. Subscribe to our channel to receive timely updates of our videos. Though we say we begin with the Anglo-Saxon period, we need to understand the history of England from a little before the coming of the Anglo-Saxons. As you can see in the map, Britain is an island. The English island is believed to have had inhabitants since the end of the Ice Age. It was at the end of the Ice Age that Britain got separated as an island. The history relevant to our paper begins from 700 BC with the coming of the Celts from Central Europe or from Southern Russia. The Celts are important in British history because they are the ancestors of many of the people of today's UK. Celtic languages are still spoken. The Celts were made up of numerous tribes. The earliest group of Celts to arrive were the Gaels. They invaded the western and northern parts of the country. The Britons, another tribe of the Celts, came next. They occupied most of present-day England and Wales. The Celts, however, are referred to as the original inhabitants of the land. The Celts were technically advanced. They knew how to work with iron and made weapons. They were fierce fighters but lacked political skill. The Celts began to control all the lowland areas of Britain. The main occupation of the Celtic tribe was agriculture. They used a more advanced ploughing method. They also built and used hill forts these hill forts remained local economic centers for a long time they traded across tribal borders and trade was important for political and social contact between the tribes the tribes were each ruled by a king or a queen the celts believed in many different gods who affected every part of everyday life druids the priests of the celtic society tried to figure out what the gods wanted in 55 bc julius caesar first visited britain but it was in ad 43 that a roman army actually occupied britain the name britain comes from the word britani the greco-roman word for the inhabitants of britain the romans mispronounced the word and called the island britannia the romans brought the skills of reading and writing to britain they had a peaceful coexistence with the celts the celtic peasantry remained illiterate the town dwellers spoke latin and greek and the rich land owners used latin the romans had to leave england in ad 407 as visigoths the germanic invaders attacked rome during the period and all roman legions were called back to their country at this time another group invaded britain they were the picts and the scots however They were defeated by the Anglo-Saxons when they invaded Britain in the 5th century AD. The Angles, Saxons and Jutes from northern Germany are called the Anglo-Saxons. They arrived as mercenaries from the eastern coast of Europe to defend against the invading Picts and Scots. They were warlike and illiterate. The name England came from the idea of the land of the Angles. K 
King Arthur, a Celtic king, is believed to have resisted the Saxon invasions. However, the historicity of the king is debated. We do not know whether such a king existed or not, but he became a central figure of many medieval histories, legends and folklores. The creator of the literary person of King Arthur is Geoffrey of Monmouth in the 1130s. The Anglo-Saxons established a number of kingdoms in Britain. There were seven. Kent, Essex, Sussex, Wessex, East Anglia, Mercia and Northumbria. They are known as the Heptarchy, a Greek word meaning rule of seven. These kingdoms fought against each other for supremacy. By the middle of the 7th century, the three largest kingdoms were Northumbria, Mercia and Wessex. King Ergbert of the Wessex, who established the supremacy of his kingdom, is considered the first king of England. The Saxons created institutions that made the English strong for the next 500 years. They formed the King's Council called the Witan. The system continues even today in the name of Privy Council, a group of advisors on the affairs of the state. Now about religion of the period. Though Christianity existed before the coming of Romans into Britain, it was during the last hundred years of Roman government that Christianity became firmly established across the country. The Anglo-Saxons, however, belonged to an older Germanic religion and drove Celts into the west and north of the country. Christianity continued to spread, bringing paganism to an end in the Celtic regions. In AD 597, Pope Gregory the Great sent a monk, Augustine, to re-establish Christianity in England. He went to Canterbury, the capital of the King of Kent. Augustine became the first Archbishop of Canterbury in AD 601. Saxon kings and the church helped each other gain more power. The church helped in establishing the belief that the kings had God's approval. The Archbishop of Canterbury is now the principal leader of the Church of England. He plays a central part in national ceremonies such as coronations. The church also established monasteries like Westminster. There were places of learning and education. The monasteries trained men to read and write so that they had the necessary skill for the growth of royal and church authority. The king who made the most use of the church was Alfred the Great, who ruled Wessex from AD 871 to 899. He established a system of law to educate the people and to write down important matters. Towards the end of the 8th century, new raiders entered Britain. They were the Vikings, the seafarers from Norway and Denmark. Alfred the Great, the Anglo-Saxon king of Wessex, resisted their attacks. Viking rule was recognized in the east and north of England. The parts of England under the Vikings were called the Dane Law. After the death of Alfred the Great in AD 899, Wessex became weak. Gradually, the Anglo-Saxons were crushed. The last great Saxon king was Edward the Confessor who ruled till 1066. The Anglo-Saxon history stops here.
This was a real short history of the old English period. We will discuss the literature of the period in our next video. Like, share and subscribe if you find our content useful. Thank you.